Hi everyone, you all seem to enjoy the last uh, episode of the wacky world of EDC Kickstarter. We're looking today a bit more at Indiegogo.com um, and just the, the claims and the products that are made on these sites to often very successfully raise capital from, I'm just going to use a really elitist word, from normies. So... <laughs> Um, I've got all my tabs open, we're going to jump in and we're going to do some light lampooning of, well, you know what, these people have all often made hundreds of thousands of dollars, so I'm sure they can take it. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so first we're looking at the world's sharpest EDC Damascus pocket knife. Now, let me get something straight. Damascus is not a steel type, like it's not a steel formula. And... They sell shitloads of stuff to normies who have seen like a couple of episodes of a History Channel show and they know that Woot's steel, Damascus steel, mythical steels, good, powerful. Oh, your Damascus sword is like, you know, Game of Thrones cut through the other sword. It's just all guff. Damascus to me is, even the proper knife companies that make Damascus stuff often don't tell you what their core steel is because it's usually not the most impressive steel. You buy it because of how it looks. Modern Damascus is, that's what it's about. Like, the core of really good Damascus would be like CPM154, which is an okay steel. Anyway, without getting too nerdy, it's all about appearances these days with your Damascus. And I always think Damascus is like, appearance-wise, the equivalent of a fedora in the knife world. It is just tacky. But anyway, um, so looking at this guy here, it's just a little key fob type knife again. There are so many of them. Omni's made from Damascus, skill, Damascus, Damascus steel, meaning it stays up to five times sharper than normal steel. Like, that means nothing. Up to five times sharper. So, is that it gets to a sharper edge, or it retains its edge for longer? It's just all guff that's just been haunting Damascus for years now. Um, these are, you know, they're not super expensive. They are, for the basic one, it's like... I oh, know for, for the holder of it, it's forty dollars. For the Pioneer, it's uh, seventy dollars Australian. So you know, probably looking at forty-five US dollars. Okay, so yeah, they come in these little nice bespoke-looking leather slips that I guess look nice from the photo here. I bet they're not going to tell you where it's made. If they don't tell you where it's made, it's made in China. That's the best rule for all Kickstarter stuff. And I you know, I buy Chinese stuff. My phone, I'm filming this on, is a Chinese-made iPhone. So I'm not, you know, not judging, but it's just always what they do. Designed in the United Kingdom, but it's going to be made in China. All the shield sites are featured it because, you know, you, I, you chip them a couple of bucks and they will. So there we go. Um, yeah. Damascus still stays longer for up to five. That's not true. Like it's just, or it's so vague. Yeah, it might stay five times longer than stainless steel that your butter knives at home are made of, but it's annoying. It annoys me as a knife nerd, but this stuff isn't made for knife nerds. This is made for normies who look at sites like geekygadgets.com. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, moving on to, and yes, the Indie world or Kickstarter world loves their mini knives and micro knives. They must just sell to people who think, oh, I could have that on my keys for a day and then put it in the junk drawer for the rest of its life. So this is the B2 Bomber Nano Knife with some truly vicious looking serrations there. Right. Robust and precise, functional and tactical. Does painting something black make it automatically tactical? Because that seems to be the rule that everyone applies. Lifetime warranty, cool. Uh, what's it made of? 440C. Uh, now I saw something interesting on this. The Great American, Great American Tooth Saw Pattern, like a crosscut tree saw. So there you go. The Nano Blade with a crosscut tree saw blade on it. I, to me, it looks like a quartermaster knife. Like it's got that real angular handle. So I don't know what the you know. <laughs> now the pocket samurai is something that really did take off there's been a few iterations from this this is from uh indie go go or kickstarter darling's uh, stat gear again it's a 440c little blade that's just we say some japanese stuff on our knife ad and the people will think oh you know must be great japanese 
The Japanese make swords. I saw that film Kill Bill. And that's as far as it often goes, and you make 60 grand. So that seems to be happening here. They make this in frame locks and in all sorts. I saw a bunch of review samples go out to everyone. Just does nothing for me. Does not move me a millimeter. Pocket Samurai. See the comments. Does everyone like their Pocket Samurai? Hello, may someone contact me? I pay for the product and there's no reply at all. I've not received anything. Why? Not any single reply from this champion, neither. Where's my product? I've emailed three times. These all went away two years ago. Best thing about Kickstarter comments is, oh, hello, lemon. Best thing about Kickstarter comments is you have to have signed up to be able to comment. So these aren't just like spammy, angry, aggro reviews. So, yikes. Hopefully it all worked out for you Pocket Samurai fans there. Oh, the Pocket Rhino. Let's have a look at this guy. Fire up the old bloody 56K broadband dial-up. Thanks, bloody Foxtel, for getting a government to water down the NBN. Anyway, Pocket Rhino, there are so many pocket tools that look like things. Man, that's an industry. I've not even gone into the pocket pry bar disaster market that that is. Ugh. Maybe the next episode. But this is the Pocket Rhino. It's like a little, little odd-looking, um, kind of almost like a Dario cast. No, who's it? Who's it? Who makes those little square head Spyderco things? It's kind of in the vein of that. And you know, what's that little bench made frog looking thing as well? Kind of gone there. So uh, the S35VN or D2 blade. These are priced that, you know, not too badly. G10 Pocket Rhino with D2 steel is 30 US dollars. Cool. So you're probably looking at, yeah, you're looking at Chinese manufacturer, I would suggest. Uh, a little bit garish for me. You could make this look a bit better if you got rid of all of that sort of complexity. It's again, the amount of bottle openers, bottle openers that people stick on all this stuff. Whoa, it's thick again. You know. The Pocket Rhino. I mean, it could be worse. It looks... Yeah, it could be worse, but definitely not something for me. Dart. I'm going by these fast and loose. I just clicked a whole bunch of them that sort of sounded... Had either big claims or decent looking pictures. So the Dart is the world's most useful microblade pocket knife... Jeez, you guys are lucky. Come across this video and come across the world's most use useful micro pocket knife. There we go. It's made $47,000 worth of people who think it looks like the world's most useful pocket knife. It's got a working demo, not the final product. It's still in prototyping stage. Ah, it's like a boxy, keychain-y looking thing. High quality material, 440C. Yeah, I have seen so many things that look exactly like that. SOG made the thing, I think, yeah, Quiet Carry made a thing that's a square thing with a knife that comes out of it. All right, how much you pay for these guys? 30 bucks, 30 US dollar dues. All right, you get three of them for 70 bucks. Okay, Eclipse, this is a morphing something. Okay, this is just the coin knife. There's been heaps of these. This one is made of 440 carbon. That means nothing again. Uh, I think they're losing a couple of words there. All sales are on hold until we finish assembling. If you place your order between 2018, hope it's got better since then. Okay, I think this one's closed and finished. So I won't harp on this one too long. Let's see the comments, how they went. This isn't working. Time for some Shelley. Unfathomable C. Whose waves are years? <laughs> Whoa, I have wandered into Ernest Hemingway in the Kickstarter comments. How good is this? Bob Dams. This isn't working. Time for some Shelley. Unfathomable sea. Whose waves are years? Ocean of time. Whose waters of deep woe are brackish with the salt of human tears? Thou shoreless flood, which in thy ebb and flow, cheer claspest the limits of mortality. Any use on my knife yet? <laughs> Love it, Bob. Ah, oh, these people that get into the comments just make me happy. Cool. Right. Shipping woes, all this stuff. Be careful with your indie projects, fellow investors. Right, this one, this one went around a while ago. Um, the Inertix Cyberpunk uh, Exoblade Knife. So... Get ready for some Kickstarter pump, guys. 
Welcome to the alternate reality where everything is already good and humanity is stepping into the era of positive cyberpunk. So I'm pretty happy with that because I have been in the era of negative cyberpunk for too long. So this knife is hopefully going to launch us through. Um, they... Since our designers and marketers make us reach the limits of the possible, this type of production cannot be transferred to any other company. They would categorically refuse. Will you make Cyber Knife? I categorically refuse. How could this happen to me? I made Sounds like some pretty intense stuff. This is a very busy looking gadget. I tell you what, it's um... Inertix is a beautiful knife that will provide years of EEC bliss. The handle is made of polished duraluminium. The blade is made of a special metal with a natural matte front surface and invincible stainless steel. All these materials were carefully selected and skillfully processed to perfection. Now I reckon this one is an M390, which is something. Uh, and all the shill sites have played with it. I'm looking for anyone that I would assume has done it without being paid. None of them. None of them. Right. Created for everyday life usage in a viral threat situation. Ah, they're going for the whole, you don't have to touch things, just touch things with your thing, which then gets put in your pocket. Ugh. God. That, how is this a thing? This The world's most annoying looking one-handed bottle opener. Right. So... One-handed bottle opener. I, am, I, am I missing the the third stage of that process? I gotta watch a video on it. Please show me a video of this one-handed bottle opener. Okay, I'm gonna have to watch the product film. Better show me this one-handed bottle opener, guys. I'm putting a minute and 35 of my time into this. Humanity is moving into the era of cyberpunk. The masked cyber truck does not seem ridiculous. The future depends on you and me positive or apocalyptic. Be ahead of time. Whoever believes in a positive outcome, I believe we are the rebellion. Oh, this means the zero tolerance school of marketing. Experience it. Experience it all. My name is Alexander Krivoshea. I'm an engineer, inventor, and product designer. I love cyberpunk computer games. And in real life, I create complex mechanisms. I think he has a robot doing the talking. I do not like knives. However, this item is necessary for all the inhabitants of the modern world. I do not like knives. I do not like knives. However, this item is necessary for all the inhabitants of the modern world. Creating a cyber device was my dream. And a year ago, I decided to implement it. Infectious so I've beats. crafted a pocket knife for creative people and for those who don't really like knives but like the sensation of the new era. The situation in the world is changing with fast progression, but Intertix goes ahead of the time and its product is in the spirit of time created for the present. Support us on Kickstarter. They're not going to show us the one-handed bottle opening, so... I do not believe that it exists. What do you do after this point? This this point, what do you do? Where does it go? You've got the bottle in your hand and you're... Mm. Right. So anyway, this is... How much do they want for this? 200 US dollars. Tell him he's dreaming. I mean, it's M390, but... Dreaming. Wow, I'm, I'm sticking on this one, but there is just, this is just, the, you know, this is all the stuff that I make fun of Kickstarter for. It's like a semi-awkward, useless, well, not useless, but a, a, a very kind of, you're barely, you're going to get it and then probably just never bring it because you'll just bring your knife thing. And it's got the worst of the goofy marketing speak and the music that goes and yeah. Money, please. And the problem is it has made a lot of money. So, you know what? I'm being the negative Nancy here. So, 
if you've got an inner tix and you fucking love it, then leave a something in the comments. <laughs> cool. Ecological, all the stuff. Oh, no, need to move off of this one. Welcome to the future of eating. We have revolutionized the paradigms of the future and created a new history of synergized consumption. I am a computer. I do not like plates, but have made a plate. Righto. Uh, cool, so we're looking at some wallets now. Did you know that the leather wallet is just history? Because what you can do instead is have a fixed, uncomfortable rectangle in your pocket that does not contour with the shape of your pants and body. So that is something you can do now thanks to half of the creators on Indiegogo. Put all your effects in a hard container and then shove the container up your butt. Join the wallet revolution. I do not like wallets, but have made a wallet. Just so many of these leather, they're these titanium boxy wallets with clips and I, I've got two legs, you know, one leg in the pocket has a big square phone already, which is not ideal, but that is the way that they are. The other one has my keys because I don't want them clacking around with my phone. Having a square front pocket wallet for me is a no, is definitely a no. So these are 20 bucks, 60 bucks for the titanium. They look kind of cool, I guess. Um, let's see how the comments have gone. They look cool, but I just think I would just never use them. I really like the Gover. The only critical flaw is the inside surface has scratches from inserting cards. Cards. Hmm. Cool. They fixed the design problem, so I don't know. You know, if this is for you, then not for me, though. Awkward looking. And then we've got the brass wallet, in case you don't like having your pants falling down all the time. <laughs> I can only imagine how heavy the brass wallet would be. Now, is brass the self sterile Yeah, brass, does that self-sterilize? I think one of them does. Is it brass or copper or bronze? Yeah, I think it is brass. Um, so there you go. They've got it. What's wrong with traditional wallets? Have you ever really thought about how dirty your wallet is? Dirty boy. Um, yeah, I guess that could be a thing. But I think what's dirtiest about a wallet is the money that goes inside them. And while I'm aware that... Brass has an ionizing factor to its surface, so it kills the microbes that sit on it. It doesn't make the money and the cards inside any cleaner. Unless this constantly releases a spray or a UV light uh, inside, it's probably not actually solving the problem of the filthy, filthy stuff inside, like cash. Anyway, why brass? Um, how can we get started? So what do we get for this? So you know what? It's for a piece of brass, it's 25 US dollars for the early bird special. That's kind of cool, like that's a good price, but again, I'll never carry a brass wallet. How much does it weigh? Doesn't say. Does it say? It doesn't say. Well, this one's just getting started. No, it's closed. Oh, it never worked out. Sorry, I'll move off. Sorry, Andrew. No, it's fine. I'll, no, I will not pick on you if it didn't even begin. So, I'll still leave in the video though, because it's funny. But, yes, we'll stop hopping on. Here we go, an asset wallet. This one closed again because it's that. I don't want that in my pocket. It's like a hard rectangle. I've already got a hard rectangle in my pocket. <laughs> it's called my phone. <laughs> it's not a rectangle. It's more of a, the other thing's more of a hexagon. Now, wallets. Or maybe I won't hop on the wallets for too long because they're just a bit similar they, oh no this one's good hey remember in like the late 90s early 2000s like your stepdad would have his have his flip phone in a leather holster on his belt and you'd be all like please don't wear it to school please don't wear it to school pick up <laughs> well now you can do the same to your kids with this wallet thing so there you go the minimalist belt well oh sorry really should look but only 900 only 18 people wanted to look like that so i will move off Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, your one-stop wallet, the Z case, Z case. How's this one doing? Oh, this one didn't work either. You know what? Maybe there's something about the wallet that doesn't really need revolution. Although here we go, the titanium wallet, a nice rectangle to put in your pocket. Um, it's the most minimalist titanium wallet. It's. 160 Australian dollars for that much titanium? No way! What? 
I mean, just saying, but knife companies make much more knife handle on a working mechanism out of titanium than that is. Where, where is this made? Ah. Let's look next at the last, I think this is the last thing I'm looking at today. The Zeus, the king of wallets, again, another big box to put. Look, it barely fits in the pocket of the model. It's just a big old box. This one got funded $354,000. It's high tech. It's got, it's blocking RF. You know, it's got that thing, you know, there's that panic of, you know, people are going to walk up to you with a pay wave machine and pay wave your pants and steal money. I've never heard of that actually happening, but maybe I live in a place where there's not people doing that all the time. But this protects you from that. It seems to keep all of your cards in its own little rectangle. I mean, it's a cool looking thing, but the thing is about these, yes, it is thinner than another um, square wallet it's showing, but the thing about a leather or a fabric wallet, and I, I have a bit of an unusual wallet, I guess, like my wallet's this green thing, but this, the thing about these is they move with your body, and so you can sit on them without sitting on a big rectangle, so your back pants pocket actually has a function, rather than these, which all kind of have to be front pocket. I just don't get it. So yeah, really seems like a hit and miss um, endeavor if you're thinking of doing a, a, a wallet of some sort on these. Either you're going to be met with abject failure or insane runaway success. So you know what, if you're a gambling man, you go ahead and you make yourself a Kickstarter wallet because you could be highly successful or not. All right, my friends, that'll do us for today. That's some more... Um, uh, exploration into the world of the uh the entrepreneurs of the edc world uh, what do you think you like these videos i kind of like looking at them and just shooting from the hip because some of this stuff is just baffling to me but there we go anyway hope you've enjoyed i'll see you all in the next video ta -ta and farewell become a pioneer with me and rediscover a new quantum acceleration in the world of youtube video I do not like making YouTube videos. I have made a YouTube video. Neutron Star. Robot Butt. Impossible Tortoise. Germination Masking Tape.